now. Hey, I'm here to talk about um, hydrogen and fuel cell technology. But before I get started, I just wanted to um, just pick up on what Ed said, Ed and Jane said earlier. If you have kids or young fellows who are not quite sure what, they, what to do with their lives, please steer them into electrical engineering, uh, like Sparkies, anyone basically who's, um, um, who's got any knowledge of electricity and electric vehicle charging, for instance, is something that we'll need uh, in the next couple of decades. So, absolutely, something that we, from a government, government's point of view, we're looking at um, getting thousands of EVs out there every year and really charging for all of them. So, that's going to be a huge business basically going forward. So, just wanted to mention that on, on the EVs and the electric vehicles. Now, um, as um, uh, Brian said, I'm, my name is BJ Siem, I'm the um, Senior Account Manager at QFleet, and I've been involved with electric cars for about 12 years now. I drove an IME back in 2010, back in the old days basically where you can go about 50Ks one way and then 50Ks back, there's no way to charge it. And actually that does remind me a lot of where hydrogen cars are these days, because there's obviously, there's no way to charge it. So, I'm just going to go through a couple of questions that we normally get. Uh, I've been touring the, um, the hydrogen car, the Mitsubishi, sorry, the, the Hyundai Nexo for the last uh, year or so around the state. And uh, these are some of, the, some of the main questions that we're getting. So hopefully we can dispel a couple of myths around hydrogen. First of all, where do we get hydrogen? Well, hydrogen is actually the most abundant element in, uh, in the universe. Um, the sun is powered by hydrogen. 61% um, of your, the cells in your body are actually hydrogen. So it's, it's everywhere, but it's also nowhere in its pure form. If uh, hydrogen escapes, um, uh, say from, from, from one, of, one of our tanks basically, it will just go straight up to the atmosphere, it will actually escape our atmosphere. It actually doesn't, doesn't um, uh, exist anywhere in its, in, its, in its pure form. It needs to be ex extracted. Um, and the way we do that, is through mainly through water because obviously water is H2 and O. We extract the H2 and the O by putting power through electricity, and that's called green uh, and hydrogen. Uh, hydrogen is then basically um, uh, stored, it's compressed, or it's, it's cooled down um, before it's put into, into one of our vehicles. And I'll go through how that works in a minute. Uh, as long as you use um, uh, renewable energy to create that energy, it's, it's that, that uh, hydrogen, it's green or and it's renewable. There's also obviously um, ways to get hydrogen out of, out of um, uh, methane and other uh, fuel, other fossil fuels, and um, they're called basically grey and blue hydrogen, but we're not really interested in how that, uh, uh, in, in, in those types of hydrogen. Uh, the other thing is obviously there's only one place to get hydrogen in, in Queensland. We have our own refiller in Cleveland. But later on this year, there will be uh, the first um, open to the public hydrogen refiller uh, down in Wynnum. The BP truck stop there will have it uh, later on this year. Um, the government's always, uh, obviously also uh, committed to a hydrogen superhighway going all the way from Cairns down to Sydney and around to, to Melbourne as well. So the, um, the state government's commit, committed to that. That's mainly for uh, heavy trucking and, and the bus industry, and I'll go into that uh, a bit later. Now, how do fuel cells work? Um, most people think that fuel cells, oh, it's hydrogen, it just goes, it goes through and it burns and it creates all these emissions and... No. The cool thing about hydrogen is that they're hydrogen vehicles, or fuel cell electric vehicles, that fuel, they're fully electric. Um, the, um, this, this is a very um, quick outline of how, um, what a, a hydrogen vehicle looks like. We've got hydrogen tanks over here. We've got a small battery yeah, basically, it's a 1.5 kilowatt battery, same as a, as a hybrid vehicle, and it's really just there to prop, prop up the, the fuel cell and to capture regenerative braking. So essentially, when you slow down, a bit of that energy goes back into the battery. Um, essentially, what, what's happening in the fuel cell is that it takes hydrogen from the tanks, it takes uh, oxygen from the from the air, and through a chemical reaction, it creates electricity and water. So it's not combustion, there's no burning hydrogen, it's actually just a chemical reaction that goes on inside the, the fuel cell that only creates um, water vapor and electricity to drive the vehicle. So it's a fully electric car, um, uh, and we're not talking about fuel cell electric vehicles. Um, and the other cool thing about it is that because the fuel cell needs, uh, needs uh, purified air, the air actually goes through a number of filters, 
and the air that, air that then comes out the back is cleaner than the air that comes in. So when a fuel cell car drives through the street, it'll actually uh, clean the air actively as it goes through, which I think is, is, is pretty cool. Now, the next question is every, on everyone's minds is obviously, is hydrogen safe? Everyone's heard about Hindenburg, obviously back in the day. Um, and uh, I guess very, <laughs> very um, uh, unkindly referred to them as sepalins initially. Um, now, knowing a bit more about uh, hydrogen and how fuel cells work, um, I can say that they're probably one of the safest cars you can drive on the market today. Now, uh, they, uh, the hydrogen itself is stored in composite uh, carbon fiber tanks. Um, it's very similar to the tank, tank you can see over there. This is a cross section actually. It's, it's hard to get the, 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 um, the scale here, but this is a carbon fiber, it's about an inch thick, thick uh, carbon fiber shell with a polymer um, uh, inside basically of it. And uh, it, uh, it houses the, the, uh, the hydrogen gas at, at uh, 10,000 psi or 700 bar. It's incredibly pressurized. Now, the, um, um, the other thing about it is obviously that th these uh, tanks go through an incredibly rigorous testing um, uh, procedure before they're, they're, they're put into these vehicles. I'm talking to, to Hyundai about it, and uh, essentially what they do, they inflate them to twice the recommended pressure, they set them on fire, they fire bullets at them to make sure that they, they're safe, and if you can, uh, actually the picture down, down here, uh, that's actually a, um, uh, an armor, armor piercing bullet being fired at a hydrogen tank. You can see there that the, the, the um, hydrogen is escaping, and it's escaping really, really quickly, and that's it. It's got a really high um, uh, ignition point, basically a flash point, so that um, uh, it doesn't just go off, basically, when it, when it escapes. It's also incredibly light, incredibly, incredibly uh, compressed, so that it just actually goes straight up at 80 k's an hour. So it's, um, it's uh, I mean, I, I put my family in this car basically pretty much every, every other week, and I'm very, very much, very happy to do it. Um, the other thing is, is um, obviously, that the crash testing, where they crash test these vehicles, uh, to, before they go on the market to make sure that they're safe. And, uh, and uh, these uh, tanks are even made to actually move in the end of someone actually crashing into a factory. Now, how does um, fuel cell electric vehicles differ from battery electric? It's one of the main questions that we're getting. And the two main differences is refueling time and weight. Because, um, just as a bit of a, a comparison, uh, looking at these, these two uh, hydrogen uh, vehicles, or oh, sorry, these two electric vehicles, the uh, next cell that we have up outside here only takes six kilos of hydrogen, and it gets us about 650 kilometers of range. Um, and the refilling time in one of those is about five minutes. Compare that to the Hyundai Kona battery electric vehicle, that's 450 kilos of batteries and about 450 k's of range. So that's basically where the two biggest differences are between the, the, uh, the battery electric and, and, um, and the fuel cell. Um, obviously, the, the benefits uh, I'm going to talk about in a minute is that uh, the lack of weight and the lack, the lack of refueling time is great for any application where you carry a lot of weight, say like trucks, um, buses, trains, planes maybe in the future. Um, and so, uh, for instance, in, in, um, in uh, China, there's, a, there's a, a bus company that has about 20 buses. They found that instead of uh, putting batteries, battery like batteries in their, in their buses, they, need, um, they found that with hydrogen buses, they can have one Bowser to fill up 20 buses and they can basically cycle them through within, within the hour. Instead of actually having a multiple uh, multiple chargers, that will take a bit of time to actually to, uh, to charge charge them all up. So. Uh, in instances, basically, where the weight of the batteries is prohibited, prohibited um, the low weight of uh, the hydrogen might be, might be beneficial. Now, why aren't we all driving hydrogen cars now? Um, and buses and trucks and everything? Well, there are uh, a few, few um, drawbacks. And, uh, the main issue with hydrogen at the moment is energy efficiency. Um, Hydrogen has to be first made or extracted. It has to be cooled or compressed. It has to be transported, then stored, um, and then pumped into a car before it actually goes into a, a fuel cell. The fuel cell isn't that efficient. So um, 
looking at basically all these, the, these steps that you have to go through before it goes in the, in the vehicle, it's only about 30-40% efficient. If you're looking at a battery electric vehicle, basically from the solar panels on your roof, straight into your battery, looking at 90-95%. to That's where the big difference is. Um, I, like, I, like, I like to give the example of, um, um, uh, of, of basically the one kilo of hydrogen. In, in our car, one kilo will give you 100 k's of range. Um, but it takes 50 kilowatts to create one kilo of hydrogen, not 50 kilowatts of power. 50 kilowatts of power into a battery electric will give you three to four hundred k's of range. And that's basically where the issue is, issue is at the moment. And that's not counting the other issues of having to really transport the vehicle, transport the compressor to all, all those other um, efficiencies. So it's still better than petrol vehicles. Um, combustion vehicles are only about 20% efficient, so they're even worse than, than hydrogen. So, those are some of the main issues that we're, we're facing at the moment. Um, the other issue with hydrogen is obviously you can't charge at home. You still have to go somewhere to a Bowser and pay whatever they want to charge you for hydrogen, um, which is similar to what we do now with petrol and diesel. So that is uh, another issue. Um, battery electric, obviously, take it home, charge it off um, solar, charge it off off peak whenever you want it. So, from a passenger point of view, again, um, a lot of people would prefer battery electric vehicles. Um, Green hydrogen is also fairly expensive at the moment. Um, we're looking at um, initially uh, probably about $15 a kilo, so it's about $90 to go 650 k's. Obviously, future, they say that it might come down to $2 a kilo, and that's basically when you start really starting to start, um, make, make savings. Again, the inefficiencies in you know, the, the electricity required to create hydrogen and then transporting and all that might come into, into play. So it's still very young. It actually reminds me of where EVs were 10 years ago, when there was nowhere to charge them. There was, nothing, there was basically very limited range. So um, I think we still have um, a long way to go in terms of the, 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 oh, sorry, the uh, fuel cell vehicles. Um, future uses, as I said uh, previously, I think trains, ferries, planes, um, energy capture, for instance, um, probably lesser extent. To cooking and heating. Heating might be more of a, um, uh, I guess it might, it might be more appropriate, but um, steel making is another thing that, that hydrogen uh, might be able to replace current fossil fuels um, with. So it's, um, it's uh, a lot of opportunities, I believe, that we, we have, and especially from a uh, government point of view. We're very keen to, to, um, to obviously promote the technology, to see basically how we can, we can benefit from this as a State, but also how we can actually use our abundance of, of uh, renewable energy to turn that into green hydrogen that we can then export to the world. That's um, essentially it for me.